When you have type 2 diabetes, your goal is to keep your blood glucose in a healthy range. And sometimes that means taking medication. But that may not mean insulin. Today, there are many non-insulin medications that can be the right option for you. In this program, you will find out how non-insulin medications work with the other parts of your management plan to help you achieve your blood glucose goals. You'll see how type 2 diabetes affects your body and how to use your medications safely. Skills that can help make them part of your everyday routine. To understand how your medications help control your blood glucose, let's see what happens when you eat. When you eat, your body breaks down most of the food into glucose, a form of sugar, and releases hormones that travel to your pancreas. The glucose enters your bloodstream, causing your blood glucose level to rise. In response to this rise in glucose and release of hormones, the pancreas releases insulin. Insulin works like a key to open the cells and let glucose enter. The glucose is used for energy now, or it is stored in the cells for later use. As insulin works to move the glucose out of your bloodstream and into the cells, your blood glucose level drops. However, you still need glucose for energy. To keep your blood glucose level from dropping too low in between meals, your pancreas releases glucagon. Glucagon triggers the liver to release stored glucose, which can be used by the cells for energy. In people who don't have diabetes, the body maintains a balance of glucose and insulin in the bloodstream, keeping your blood glucose in a healthy range no matter what or when you've eaten. But when you have type 2 diabetes, this process is out of balance and too much glucose builds up in the bloodstream. This is called high blood glucose or hyperglycemia. The causes of type 2 diabetes vary from person to person. When you eat, the hormones that are released may not tell your pancreas to release insulin. Your pancreas may not make or release enough insulin. Your liver may release too much stored glucose into your bloodstream. Or, your cells may have trouble taking in glucose because they can't use insulin. This is called insulin resistance. There are several classes of non-insulin medications used to treat each of these conditions, and more are being developed all the time. There are also some diabetes medications that combine two medications into one pill giving you greater control of your blood glucose. There may not be one single reason why your blood glucose level is higher than normal. So you may be prescribed a combination of these medications, or an injectable non-insulin medication, or maybe even insulin to help control your diabetes. Work with your diabetes care team to find the best medication or medications to help you keep your blood glucose in a healthy range. Do you understand the different causes of type 2 diabetes? Do you know the name of your diabetes medication or medications? When you have questions, talk to your diabetes care team. They will help you learn which medications work best to help you achieve your blood glucose goals. The more you know about your diabetes medications, 
the more likely you will use them safely and effectively to help you achieve your blood glucose goals. Store all of your medications in a cool, dry place out of direct sunlight. Your medicine cabinet in the bathroom may not be the best place because of moisture. Some medications may need to be stored in the refrigerator. For best results, take your medications only as directed. Know the best time to take them. For instance, some medications should be taken a half hour before you eat breakfast and dinner, while other medications must be taken with the first bite of your meal. And learn what to do if you forget to take a dose. To avoid this, it may be helpful to organize all your medications in some way, especially if you take more than one kind. Some people use a calendar to remember when to take their medication. Others prefer using a pill organizer. Some people use a chart and simply check off their medications as they take them. And still others find that keeping track of their medications in their blood glucose records works best. Make sure all of your healthcare providers, even your dentist and pharmacist, are aware of what diabetes medications you are taking, because other medications, even over-the-counter ones, may decrease the effectiveness of your diabetes pills or cause a harmful interaction. Have all your prescriptions filled at the same pharmacy. Your medication may cause side effects. Depending on the medication you take, you may experience hypoglycemia, also called low blood glucose, diarrhea, nausea, abdominal pain, bloating, headaches, muscle pain, and weight gain or loss. If you are experiencing any side effects, do not stop taking your medications until you discuss your concerns with your diabetes care team. One side effect that you may be at an increased risk of is hypoglycemia, also called low blood glucose, especially if you also take insulin. Hypoglycemia can be serious and may cause you to pass out. It develops when the parts of your management plan become out of balance. If you skip a meal, exercise more than usual, or if your medication needs adjusting, your blood glucose can drop too low. When this happens, your body doesn't get the energy it needs. Symptoms you may experience include headache, weakness, a cold sweat or clammy feeling, shakiness, hunger, irritability, and dizziness. Discuss whether you are at risk for hypoglycemia with your diabetes care team and develop a plan to treat it so you are better prepared for the possible situation. If you are at an increased risk of hypoglycemia because of the diabetes medications you take, always carry a carbohydrate food with you in case of low blood glucose. That can be four to six ounces of fruit juice or regular soda, three to four glucose tablets, five to seven lifesavers, or eight ounces of non-fat milk. Hypoglycemia often signals that changes are needed with some part of your management plan. If you experience hypoglycemia, meet with your diabetes care team to figure out why. Taking your medication safely also includes knowing how to handle sick days. An illness like a cold or the flu can raise your blood glucose. High blood glucose can complicate your illness and slow your recovery. It's important to continue taking your diabetes medications if you become sick. However, you may need to make some adjustments. Knowing how to manage your diabetes medications when you're sick can help you better control your blood glucose levels. So, before you get sick, prepare a sick day plan with your diabetes care team. 
On days when you are sick, let your diabetes care team know if you have difficulty taking your medications as directed. Notice any side effects or unusual symptoms, or think your medication is not working as it should. Do you have a plan to keep your pills organized? Can you recognize the symptoms of hypoglycemia? Have you made a sick day plan with your diabetes care team? Learn all you can about your diabetes medications to ensure you are taking a safe and effective approach to managing your diabetes. Whatever non-insulin medication your diabetes care team has recommended for you, whether it is a pill or injectable, taking your medication is an important part of managing your diabetes. Understand how it works and how to use it safely, especially when your diabetes is complicated by hypoglycemia and sick days. This knowledge and these skills will help you reach your blood glucose goals and better control your diabetes.